Okay, so we have the dollar at resistance, yields at support. That's pretty interesting. I mean, they're going in the same direction, but funnily enough, in the uber short term, you got the dollar here that I think has hit resistance. So, but it's quite strong today too, you know, like you've got resistance for the last two days and just powered up, closing the high update, but it's still, in my opinion, resistance. 103.5 is, you know, we hit it there. It was kind of support there. It's kind of a big number, if you will. Obviously anything can happen, but I feel like we should be going sideways, getting a bit tired and retracing. But to be honest, gold, silver, which had an update, both of them, going up with the dollar suits me perfectly. So I don't mind more days where gold and silver go up just modestly a little bit whilst the dollar's going up. Because imagine when it turns over, I feel like it could turn over a little bit, but I, I really don't mind a continuation of what we've seen. But anyway, dollar up yields, especially the 30 and the 10, just down a little bit, but hitting support, right? It hit resistance, went above resistance. Now that resistance is a bit of support, 4.3 on 30, 10 years, same kind of thing at four. Even the two years kind of hitting a bit of support, right? It also went for resistance. So I feel like yields should go up. The dollar would go higher, but I expect it to actually just go sideways a bit. Overall, a bit of strength in the yields and the dollar. If you sum them together, and usually they go together. But again, we don't really care because gold's just going up nonstop. Gold, you know, I was talking about this ascending steep support. Let's put in some yellow now. You know, this nice... Well, horrible. There, this little place, beautiful, right? It hit that, the ascending, gone back up. Then there was this descending. We saw it was looking strong, a sideways day. And then this day, I really, I want to do a video yesterday, uh, Tuesday, because it looked super strong. And then continuation today. Today, obviously, we tested resistance at the all-time high, 26, nah, whatever you want to call it, 85-ish. Okay, we didn't take it out. That's perfectly fine. Even better, I would say. Just just take your time. You know, it's the staircase. Uh, but we closed just really strong. Just strong, not really strong, just strong. You know, not high of day, just middle of the day. That's fine. What's going to happen? Well, we're going to go to 2,700. We're going to close above 2,700. We're going to keep going up. That's what I think is going to happen. And I don't think the dollar or yields can change that. Silver... Silver did its thing, what you can expect. So it outperformed gold at the high of day. But on the descent, it outdid gold too. It still had a green day, which is cool. It still closed above the resistance that it put in before. That's cool. It's still just one day away from making, you know, new highs, 3250. That's one day away. Basically, it was a hesitation today. It was a not yet. You're not ready yet. You know, you just need that extra signal. And wait a minute, don't we have something tomorrow? Don't we have like, is it retail sales or um? there's a big number coming out tomorrow? That'll be the catalyst, you know? And if it's not favorable for the metals, then we just go back down a little bit and we just take it out like eight days later. So, you know, I can delete this. There's only one resistance. There you go. Support is still, it's going to be the, you know, back here. I don't think we're going there. Well, I don't know. Tomorrow, if there's big news and just disappoints and shocks. We'll go back down to 30 and 30 should hold. Because uh, cause there's a lot of strong buying here, you know, and central bank support here, by the way, I didn't mention it. Obviously, resistance is 26, sort of 85, -ish, 2,700, a close above that, and we're going up. Now, on the way down, <laughs> it's going to be, let me take this yellow away. It's going to be the ascending still, and that's going to be pretty much, let's be honest, if we have this disappointing day, it's going to be about 26, I think, about 26, just below 2640 you know, basically the ascending. And if we break the ascending, where do we close? You know, we can break it intraday. Do we close within the ascending? That's cool. Then we're still, we're still green, <laughs> like, you know, green light for going back up. But if we close below 2,600, that is, that is your signal to like trim late. I mean, you're still, you're going to be fine. You know, if you want to swing it on the short side, let's say, and me, I'm, you know, I've got my core position. I'm not, shorting anything i'm just gonna take out 10 percent max something like that i made that up but you know what i mean i'm still holding my core position but the point is you take out 2600 on the daily uh psychologically this will be two trend lines positive trend lines taking out the, the steep ascending and the horizontal for me that's uh you know we're going back down again 
probably 2550 or 2530 or 2500 and you're still in a superbly strong uptrend so watch 2600 but otherwise for me the the, the biases to the upside path of least resistance 2700 so that's what i think is going to happen going up some more obviously let's check the miners now the miners they put in some ugly candles but it was a green day and you know by and large, all stocks were green, 1% or 2%, something like that. It's fine. It's fine. Gold wasn't up much. Silver wasn't up much. The dollar was up. That's cool. We'll take that. Uh, and yields look strong. So that's cool too, because people should know that yields are going to go up, I think, you know, tomorrow. So maybe you position yourself to sell miners, you know, if you're really looking at that correlation. But it didn't happen. You know, miners were up. Markets were up again, as usual. But we're outperforming the markets. So this is not a great candle, right? I think they call it a shooting star, but you recognize it when you see it. Close at low of day. Are we going to fill that gap tomorrow? I don't know. I don't mind starting red and closing green. I like those kind of days. So we could do that. It's just a hesitation. It was a, you know, we're not ready yet. So I think the high of day was straight away in the morning. And uh, anyway, green day. Let's see if we can, you know, what I'm expecting is maybe a gap fill with basically a bit of a, all we've got is cup and handles, cup and handle. It's just nonstop cup and handle, especially, you know, gold, silver, even the miners. It's like it's like a goddamn tea party. Just too many handles now also. And I think this will be a, another handle. And then just, that's it, done. Along with silver taking out 32, 50, 33. So GDXJ, maybe we get a bit of a gap fill, but we're looking for that 52, that close above 52. And it's not going to take five or six business days. It will take two something like that. maybe it just happens tomorrow to be honest that's gdxj they all look the same sil j look at that you know resistance perfect by the way obviously it's just old resistance it's pretty easy to call but you know if you wanted to trim i didn't trim anything i was having a bike ride and thinking about maybe i should have trimmed something because i've gone heavy right i've gone heavy even down here and it, i should probably be trimming what i bought back there just in case you never know. And uh, who knows, tomorrow, if we get a good shot, I might trim, even though I'm so sure we're going to break out. I just, it's just risk reward management. Thing. Just in case you're wrong, they've all got the same sort of candle, right? They all tested their highs. I mean, this resistance is correct. This support is correct. It still applies, by the way, on the downside. Otherwise, you've got the steep ascending. Let's see if we can break it. We just need that conviction. There was some hesitation because basically gold and silver just gave back some gains and you need that 2700 you need that 32 50 33 for the green lights for the miners all right let's take a look at the portfolio it's a bit of outperformance right same candle but look it's outperformance it made a new high so i like that that's why i'm not in gdx uh i think i can outdo it in my own miners but i think the resistance here was pretty good too basically 50 and just below 5800 so give or take where's that from oh sorry over here it's it's a hard i mean that's honestly i don't even know if i got it there so i got lucky if i did that's not really strong resistance i don't actually see any real resistance it's really hard to call like there i can yeah just small resistance every couple two dollars or something so i'll leave that one in that looks correct i could even move it down because now it's going to be today's high obviously but uh, otherwise, you know, this resistance here, which we've just gapped above 56, 56.30, that became support. So, But again, we may just gap fill and go back up or just copy. So Newmont looks like it's stronger than the GDX, which it is. Gold, you know what? I should check. There's probably news on this because there's that's a bit of a surprise. Big move up. You know, it's kind of close towards the lower half, but not a good candle. It's not a bad one. It's just not good. It needs really breakout and go. I think it's just the jurisdictional risks that it carries with all its assets and dodgy jurisdictions. Maybe that's barrack gold should be really higher. I, I still think long term it does a lot more upside move, but it's not a great candle. If we take it, probably does end up at 21 or higher though. If, if gold takes out 27, I mean, I don't care what the reason is for this, you kind of belong up there. So yeah, support. I think the yellow is correct still, by the way. Support resistance. Agnico closed at low of day, filled its little gap up. I think it's the same as the others. We'll see. Right. Resistance 85. After that, 
the all time high, which is like 89 or something. Support is still going to be down here. Resistance is going to be up there. And that's it. Just keep it simple. And tomorrow's news, I'm pretty sure there's news that should really send us one way or the other. Pan America, a bit disappointing, being down over 1%, close at low day. Resistance was correct. It was the old high, obviously. Big round number 23. So that remains in place. Next one is the old 52 week high of basically 2420. And that's it. Then you got support down here. Uh, if you get bad news, we'll probably hit this 20, 2050 kind of area. Uh, I don't see us going all the way down to descending, but if we do, that's going to be support, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is correct. We turn. Yes, we took out resistance, decent candle, right? It's not up like half a percent, it's up one and a half percent. That looks good. The resistance is very clear. Everyone can see that 64, sort of fifth, uh, a bit higher actually, 6480. Support. Well, I guess it proved that prior resistance is support. That's 62, but that's very, very short term. If we have a big drop, which we if we have a down day, it's gonna be a big down day tomorrow. So you can forget this support actually, just because we know I think it's a big down day, a uh, big day tomorrow. If it's down, then it's gonna be more than just 62. It could be the ascending support which is the weakest one. you got to watch out. i got to watch out. All right, Franco Nevada. <clears throat> I still think we're going up. I still think we've got one last pump before we go sideways, maybe drop a bit and then go back up. Franco Nevada is okay, but like we didn't actually proved itself, gapped up and held its very short-term resistance at about, let's call it 125-ish. It's just below actually. Yeah, resistance is 130. Support is going to be down here at 119. Absolutely correct. If we flush down, which I don't see happening, it's going to be 114. Metalla, Metalla. That one is just looking like it wants to inch up. This is the 3250 silver, the 2700 gold breakout. And then what happens? We just probably continue the squeeze up the fall. So yeah, I'm going to say 37, 3.7 and four bucks on the upside. Downside, let's move this up. Well, I'm going to say it's 3.35 because you can see all the little wicks here, you know. So if we have a violent move down, I reckon we stop around 3.35. Could go a few cents below. I think I'll be correct about that. Well, I hope I'm not because I want it to go up. First Majestic, you can see, you can see. First of all, this is clear resistance. And by the way, secondary resistance, right? It's always the horizontal following the ascending or descending. Clearly, this I was talking about 6.8 quite a lot. It was actually 6.85. I knew that. I just would say 6.8. But it's these two levels. It's these two horizontals. First of all, this is clear. It's the old high over here, 6.85. And here, I'm giving myself like five cents because you can see you've got this descending, which I think counts. And you've got these little wicks in this candle here, Friday the 11th. And then this one here, Friday the 4th. So obviously between 6.75 and 6.85, you've got this 10 cent range. You know, and it looked like it was ready to go. Uh, quite a few silver stocks had this, you know, high update at the beginning, ready to just like do three, four, five percent. But it was uh it was a no-go. It was um abort mission, you know, <laughs> postpone basically, postpone the launch. It does make for an ugly candle. In the end, it's just 1.2% down. We know the reason, so it's not like some reversal candle. Maybe we have a bit of a drop, continuation drop, just because of the close at low of day. Depends what gold and silver do. But it's all about that news coming out. And if it's good for the metals, this should return back up. And um, if not that day, the next day, Friday, makes a nice weekly candle. We could start moving up towards the 7.65 you know, zone which would make a beautiful chart. And we know there's good news behind it. So this, we just need that little moving gold and silver after the headlines is over. It's all about the close. And it's, it's all about the close the next day. Like if you have a really big number, like FOMC news or, or NFP, you know, the big data releases, it's all about the daily close, but it, I always feel like it's about the daily close the day after. That's when everyone's digested, you know, slept on it told their traders what to do the next day and on top of that it would be a weekly close for us but it could really look beautiful and set us up for just a squeeze all-time high squeeze and the silver squeeze a phrase that's overused by me uh, also 
Okay, so Fortuna looks okay. Oh, sorry, first Majestic Fortuna. Same kind of candle, but weaker. You can see it, you can feel it. Here you can you can see it's it's getting tighter, you know, it's getting tighter, the resistance and the support. This one looks weaker than it looks strong. I just feel like the metal price will send it back up to here. But this one now, this one is to be sold. I tell you what, if there's a red day tomorrow, this thing is gonna get crunched. It's like holding 4.64. You're ascending and your horizontal are both there. 4.4 is your support. You close below 4.0. You know, the low of this these two wicks here, let's say four four point three five or lower, that's gonna look like it wants to go back below four. Because you'll have continuation in gold and silver, right? Gold will be like twenty six hundred close below. You gotta watch out. Some of these and the weaker ones will be the weakest ones on the way down. So Fortuna, I am not confident in, I must admit. But if we have a nice pop up, tell you what, I might just sell a trim a little bit of that like 509 just out before 510 if we keep going another trim maybe 5.39 just to make sure i get it instead of trying to get this obvious 5.5 sell from 5.45 i would be selling this this is a weak one um now talking about weak let's find one that's not well cde is weak for cde but it's still a very nice chart perfect technicals gap fill straight away 6.79 uh close at low of day not great we know that the silver stocks have done it we need but still higher low higher high right it's red but it's it's a it's a green day it's um yeah just have that little curl go back up and hopefully close above 6.8 and then you need one big move up which would be ideal for closing above 3215 silver so imagine you start closing above 6.8 10%, 12%, easy. Absolutely easy. <laughs> if you have silver at 33 bucks, you have CD at plus 10% pre-market in the story. And then you're just going towards $9 for, for the next couple of business days. So we just need gold and silver. This is the short end of it. Heckler, same thing. Didn't fill the gap. Close the low of day. Did venture above its resistance at 6.8. This one also a curl and move back up. For me, resistance is 7.4. Support is 6.5, nice number, also a selling support. If we lose that, then 6, well, actually, you know what? If we lose that, you've also got, since Heckler is very strong, got good news, maybe 6.3 could do something, if you see what I mean. But let's get a nice move on. Ugly candles, but green day, and we know what happened. It was basically a postpone the launch. So at the beginning was the high of day, postponed the launch, and it's just faded on the way down. It's okay. You live to fight another day. EXK, same kind of thing. We ventured higher than resistance at 4.5. We closed below resistance, of course, but it was another higher, higher, higher low on the daily. Again, we need that curl and move back up. It's pretty hard in one day to just have a big blue green candle following something like this, but something constructive like a doji or, and this goes for all of them, or kind of reversal, or a bit of a blue one, you know, it's going to be hard to close above 4.6 on this chart and all the other respective ones, and you've got to kind of like that. But you've got big news, and sometimes it is what it is, and, you know, I think silver stocks, or just gold and silver stocks, are, are starting to really feel stronger than they were the last couple of years, just relatively speaking. They, they are stronger. They're not getting sold like they used to. They outperform the medals, the markets overall, and... I don't know. I just feel like a shift in momentum. Commodities in general, you know, being respected more. So, okay, but I shouldn't be talking about that with the XK. There you go. Resistance, it's still 4.5. I would say that there's another one now, 4. Point, you know what? I'm going to move it up 4.6 now, just because of what happened today. 4.6, 4.8, 5, basically 20 cent increments, very light resistance on the way up. Support, uh, I'm going to move it down here, 4.2, a 4, yeah, okay, something like that, something like that, okay, so I can get it. next, the last silver stock, mag silver, again, another one made a new all-time 52-week high, but we cancelled the show, it closed below resistance, which was 16, so that's nice, higher highs, higher lows, looks absolutely wonderful, 
No problem. 16 is still, uh, you know what, because of today, I'll say it's 16, 16 or whatever the high was. That'll be a resistance. After that, it's 17 all the way up here. Absolutely possible to get there. I think it's the path of least resistance. It could even do it tomorrow in one go. Big down day, you're probably still not going to get to 14, but that's your support. And then, yeah, this is easy to call. Next one, Aris Mining. That's nice. That's pretty good. Close a high of day, unlike all the others. Um, yeah, five bucks of resistance. After that, it's 520. That's correct. Support. I'm just going to leave it all the way down here. This one has a tendency to just flush quite a bit. If it if it needs to go down, it'll overdo it because of the bid ask spread and lack of liquidity. So I'm going to keep it simple and like that. There's your resistance, there's your support. Looking quite good. If we have a good day tomorrow, we'll probably get to five bucks, actually. Uh, I am gold. Nice. Gapped up. Close green above resistance. Resistance is five. I didn't really expect such strength. But yeah, three over 3%. That was pretty good. Resistance 5.6. After that, it's six bucks. Support, well, no, it's not there. It's too close. Gap fill, of course, I'm not going to put that in. I'm just going to, because it's been quite weak recently, I'm going to give it some room here. Support is 4.4. Big down day. It probably won't get there in one day, but the following one or two business days, it could get down there. And if that flushes, then you're probably going to retest descending, which probably coincide with something like this, 3.8, something like that. But I prefer to... To have a move up, BTG, that's beautiful, that's strong. That's going a little higher after hours. So down we went, that was your support, created out of thin air, fair enough. Up we go, we bounce, we're retesting this very significant descending. Usually it's obsolete at this point. Uh, I just didn't take it out yet for the, go on, let's move it. Ah, it's perfect, it's absolutely perfect. Okay, it doesn't matter about the descending, it's all about this 3.4. This doesn't even count. Although it did find resistance there. Support is going to be three bucks. It'll be just above the low down there because it's higher highs, higher lows, good news behind it, etc. Big round number. So it's going to be 301. If we crash that, it's going to be down here, down there, etc. We're not going lower than that. Um, we need tomorrow. That would really be perfect timing. You know, 33 in silver, 2,700 in gold. B2G will be definitely closing above 3.5, I would say. And the next couple of days going to 3.8. And, you know, zoom out. What is 3.5, 3.8? It's nothing. You know, this should start making its way towards 7. 7. No problem. That'll take some time, but still, that's what the chart says. And I think the company is is, is worth it. Equinox, yeah, ends up just unchanged. Okay, support remains correct. Maybe an extra one there. Don't need that for now. We're not going down that fine one day. If we do have a big red day, it might just get... Wait, post-market, we're at 5.58? I didn't see anything like that. What is this, Equinox? No, that's fake. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, otherwise, big red day tomorrow. You could go down to 554, then 520. Yeah, that's okay. Resistance, still six bucks. You can see we ventured above it. We closed way below it, back to yesterday's close. So basically, everything was called off. We might as well have never traded today. But it still, it still indicates that you, you have this wanting to go higher and ultimately wanting to test 650 if gold obliges so we need gold and silver to go up and this will you know in one or two or three business days get back to 650 and at that point it's a triple top breakout and then you can start looking at higher numbers seven should be easy then 750 easy nine ultimately where you want to get to on a run towards three thousand gold uh yeah so but anyway the resistance and support remains the same ssrm this one looks strong, even though it closed technically red, basically unchanged. Um, higher highs, higher lows, just ventured above six, almost, you know, 620 is the absolute high. We're at 607. It's, it's kind of the same thing. So I'm going to move resistance up. 
completes for today's high of day. It's pretty much the same thing as the ultimate resistance of 620. Support, I'll leave it over there. If it has a down day tomorrow, it's not going to get there in one go. It, it just, it's not allowed to have such a big move, I think. But very constructive chart. Remember, down, mudslide, disaster, et cetera, et cetera. That's already after coming down a lot, a lot. I said it was a buy here, by the way. <laughs> well, I thought it didn't do a video, but I thought it was a buy. And then all of a sudden, mudslide, who can imagine that? That's why I was buying like an animal over here. And then, you know, drifts higher, nice bounce, but it just doesn't have the, the momentum to keep going up despite the metals going up. And then I thought, oh, here we go. It's going down. The metals going down. This is already weak. Doesn't break down. Start to go up when everything else is not really strong. Point is now it's strong relative to everything else. And plus our sector is going up. So here you've got the absolute high from this low area. It's been trading for ages. We're basically one or two days away from breaking out. You take out 620, you should run to eight, you know, ah, I don't know, but seven at least quickly. So there's your support, there's your resistance. And above 620, normally I'd say every 50 cent increment from a round number, so 650, seven, 650 is too easy. It might not squeeze in one day, you know, up 20%. It, I expect it to have like plus 3%, plus 6%, plus 2%, minus 1%. You know, just drifting higher every day quite quickly. Yeah, SSI looks good. SBSW, look at this, the old support of 3.9 that I kept in again. I think it's 3.8, doesn't really matter. 3.9. This, this little candle here still has a roll. It's like between there and there. Yeah, it's kind of the middle. There you go, bounced, and it's off to descending, actually. That's quite nice, isn't it? Nice day today. I mean, this is not really gold-specific. It's multi-metals. That's what I like to call it. But uh, it's a good day. Could go back up to, to 4.7, actually. That would be really nice. So there you go. Um, you know, the last two days were overall decent. We are proving that we want to test the old highs. We need maybe news as a catalyst. We've got that tomorrow. I forgot what it is. Retail sales or initial jobless, some medium significant news. But I think why not? A day like that, a day like tomorrow could be the day where we ultimately test the the highs. You know, silver is the most important one. Gold 2700. Why not? We'll take it. Silver 3250. I really want 33. A close above 33, and that's it. It's like chase them almost all right um yeah like share subscribe and all that stuff comment i like the comments it's good for both of us otherwise have a good evening